Uh, the 37th attempt of filming Ego on break, so uh, mm. we changed uh, spots, changed vehicles, and uh, took the phone apart to see if it would not melt down. So uh, we're going to give this another shot and uh, mm. try to talk wrestling, but uh, it may not be as good as it once was. So uh, <laughs> I think that's a Trace Aiken song, isn't it? Uh, it's a something. But... Uh, you watched any wrestling lately? <laughs> you feel like I've asked Clearly that question have, before. Yeah, uh, so, uh, have you watched any wrestling lately? G1 Climax, YouTube, Ric Flair, uh, WrestleMania 3, American Express, United States Tag Team, whatever the fuck. I think it was the U.S. Express. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Don't leave home without it. Versus uh, Nikolai Volkov and uh, Iron Sheik at WrestleMania 3. What would you think of that match? For being an older school match, I really enjoyed it. Oh, yeah. well, it was also returned to Barry Wyndham. So yeah, you got so two, you guys two really good, really good like wrestlers. worker workers, yeah. and then two like I'll beat you up. So. Yeah. Uh, for what it was, I enjoyed it. I really did. Yeah. It was cool watching because I probably haven't watched that actual WrestleMania three in probably fifteen years, if really? not longer. Yeah, it's been a long time since I watched it. Yeah, story. I don't know. Like I don't even know if I've ever like seen the whole WrestleMania. I like I know I've twice. watched, you know, the, the you know, mm -hmm. you gotta watch, you know, uh, Andre and Hogan. You gotta watch Savage and Steamboat or whatever. Has who special delivery Jones lost in like record time at that one? I yeah, remember I think who so. it was. Was it King Kong Bundy? Was it Bundy? I was thinking yeah, Bundy. Bundy. I was gonna say Bundy or uh, Big Boss Man. I couldn't Somebody. remember which one. So, but it was good. But it was cool to see them win the tag belts. And I watched that the day that uh, they passed away. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah, for sure. Um, I watched a uh, watched two highlight videos that one that Eric Wayne put out and one that Tattoo put out, and uh, they were both for uh, Brian Christopher. But they were really good. Like the dude really did has done a lot in this business. He you know? did. Uh, he was what was it the one his, his dad owned up in Tennessee. Yeah, the like the Memphis wrestling or whatever. Yeah. Uh, he did a lot there. I saw some of that yeah. stuff. And uh, I've met the guy two or three times. Oh yeah. And um, nice enough dude. I yeah, guess, I, I, I never had any real problems with him. Mm. The few times I, I worked cards with him, I worked shows with him. And uh, like I say, I, I was there when uh, Nathan Lawler and him wrestled over. Lawler, Nathan using the name Lawler, and he lost. So, uh, Christopher lost. Nathan lost. Nathan lost. Nathan lost. And then uh, Nathan couldn't use the Lawler name anymore. He's now Nathan Aldridge, which yeah. is his real name. But it's cool that, you know, he got to have that kind of storyline with, yeah. you know, that guy. I was always a big Ron Christopher fan growing up um, when he, when he was first came, I was like too sexy or whatever. Like, not so much the Grandmaster sexy, yeah. but it was like him and uh, too much Scott Taylor. And, you know, they were too cool or whatever. Too cool, yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I definitely, you know, I was a fan of his then. Like, he had actually donated, um, like, that, the uh, the tights that he wore as too cool. The, uh, yeah, when he wrestled the, the polka dotted tights or whatever to uh, Nathan Aldridge's, Nathan Lawler. Uh, his aunt was sick or whatever, had yeah, a benefit. Had and I put in a pretty good bid on those, and I... I Regret that I didn't put a higher bid because I would have really liked to have those. I remember the story behind it was he wrestled the Undertaker in those times. I think so. And that was what meant so made him so special yeah. to him. I can't remember the exact, but I just remember the Undertaker was in the match. Yeah. That was what was so yeah. special. It was the uh, the green. I think they were green with like polka dots or whatever. Mm -hmm. And and I say I was a big Brian Christopher fan at that stage of his career, and uh, would have been really cool to have that. That was a full house show too. Oh, yeah. when I was telling you they advertised with just a uh, billboard. billboard yeah and bro they wouldn't seem to be seen that's good that's good so, so uh I know I know we've both worked a lot with Brickhouse Brown in the latter part of his career yeah uh you got a Brickhouse Brown story let me think of one I can tell uh let's see here <laughs> probably got a lot you can't tell huh uh, well not right now a little too early <laughs> uh let's see uh First time I met Brick was actually at the Battle Zone. Mm -hmm. and he didn't wrestle, but he did a promo. And I remember out of everybody that night, his promo stuck out. You know what I mean? It shined. Right. And I think his promo probably got the reaction of the Dagum Night. Yeah. Actually, Brick may be the last wrestler I took a Polaroid with. Right. Now that I think about it, you know, <laughs> because like Polaroids were kind of still out of, like they had gone out of style, but Brick still had some. Like he was still doing Polaroids in the ring. 
and uh, somewhere I've got a I've got a, a Polaroid of me and Brickhouse Brown. So that's pretty cool oh, that's because. Awesome. You know, not only are you losing wrestlers from that generation, you're losing traditions and, you know, hustles that they did, you know, to make ends meet and, you know, get that extra extra money. But, yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure the last Polaroid I ever took with a wrestler is with Brickhouse Brown. And uh, at that time, I was still a fan. I hadn't gotten into the wrestling business or yeah. anything. And uh, so it was pretty cool to kind of get to work with him and stuff like that later on. And I, I never got a picture with old Brick. I, God, I've worked out. I don't know how many yeah. them shows with him. You know, he was probably the legend besides sports shop that yep. I've been on a lot of shows yep. with. I worked with him and worked for him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Shows. Yeah, me too. I worked a television taping one time with no TV cameras for Brick. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> Matter of fact, Brian Christopher was on that show. And it was actually the first time I ever saw somebody get legitimately hurt. And really? He broke his leg because... It was the the ring where the boards were like this, oh, yeah. and the board popped up. Uh -huh. And when the board popped up, the dude broke his broke his leg. And like Brian Christopher, we literally had to carry the guy out of the ring. Do you remember who the guy leg. was? I really don't. don't. Honest to God, dude, that was like my first ago. year in yeah. wrestling. I mean, like legit. And I worked J.D. McKay on the show. Did you? Oh, yeah. outlaw. So J.D. might remember who it is. He got a better memory for us than I do. I'll tell you, this <laughs> brings it up. At Fight Night 4, mm -hmm. there was an older wrestler, which he still looked phenomenal. But uh, remember when they rebooted the, the Mid-South Wrestling here in, in the South? And uh, it came on TV and had like Disco and Mick Foley. Yeah, we and, talked about it a couple of times. All right, well, this guy wrestled for that promotion. And uh, his name is Jagged Edge. And a lot of people know him more from Georgia, from like Wild Side and Anarchy and stuff like mm -hmm. that. He wrestled like that. But he was at the show. And uh, so I got to talk to him. But... You know, to tie it all together, Outlaw J.D. McKay became Outlaw based on that show. Yeah. Because he was trying to get on the show, and uh, they told him that he was too Outlaw to be on their shows because he worked for all the Outlaw promotions. And uh, that's how the Outlaw was born. So, uh, I love Outlaw, man. Him, between him and Monty, I probably right. learned more out of them two than I have anybody else. Absolutely. You know, uh, JD learned a lot, you know, just, you know, him and Eddie Gilbert was really mm -hmm. good friends and stuff. And I think that's maybe how he got into the business. I'm not 100% sure. I'm not sure either. He's but one of them I've always wanted to sit down and do life. I was going to say, he would be a good one for he life and head life. Man, blame far away. Man, we're about to get him. Hey, JD, if you watch these, hit us up, man. Let's do a life and head lot. So, uh, uh, the one to show we was going to do it, he was just so dad blame busy that yep. show I never could do. Yeah, you know, he could probably do like an hour long out, out Bro, of he life and head lot. He so. could probably do a day long one. So he's got so much experience. He wrestled uh, this one the weekend where the uh, Lawler son died. Yeah. Oh, oh and uh, I saw that. Uh, I can't remember who he wrestled. But he this last wrestle. show that Jerry Lawler did, I don't know if it's the same. I'm pretty sure it's the same show he worked Ellsworth on. Mm -hmm. But did you uh, see the picture? he wore out uh, Brian Christopher's jacket and he so grandmaster grandmaster sexy, sexy on it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I saw it because Ellsworth, Ellsworth wrestled Lawler, and Ellsworth is probably the most emotional match I've ever had in my life. Yeah, and it was him hugging Brian right. King Lawler. I shared the picture because yeah. it was it was real sentimental. You know, and another really guy fun. that you know really had, didn't get any uh, media play or whatever is Tracy Cadell. Like, if you're a uh, Hardy's Boy fan or an Omega, I remember um, him after you told me. Yeah, where he Tra from. Tracy Cadell, he was very involved with that. I believe he was a referee, but I think he still did things like behind the scenes and stuff like that. And uh, he passed away the same day, I believe, that Nikolai and Brickhouse and uh, I think Brian he's, on the, he, he's on the Omega Duck. Yeah, he's on the yeah. So that's how I saw him. And uh, fans today may know him as Trevor Lee from Impact uh, as his dad. Oh, okay. okay. Um, Trevor Lee is actually Trevor Lee Cadell. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm saying that name right. But uh, so, you know, it was, I'm sure it was tough for him, um, you know, losing a parent. But, you know, definitely, you know, yeah, for you know, just someone sent out condolences. It's a little late, but I guess it's never too late to think about somebody. Um, so, you know, send out to those those people. I believe there's one more person that passed away, but I, I swear uh, I'm drawing a blank. I have to say I, I can't remember, but I thought somebody had said there was a fifth guy in the business, but maybe just not as famous, you know. Yeah. Um, we can't all be on WWE, right? right. Or TNA. Yeah. Well, let me. This has been. Uh, a subject of debate. TNA is doing a uh, tryout mm -hmm. coming up, and yeah, it's a uh, Fury actually told me about it yeah. yesterday. But uh, what do, what do you think about guys paying for a tryout? I don't like it. You don't like it? No. 
IWA does it too, but they will actually do it where you get on a show yeah. and have a match. Right. Now that's different to me because yeah. now you have an opportunity right. to sell your merch because people know who you are. That's true. So you have an opportunity to make your money back on what you paid IWA. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But TNA, you, you well, I mean, the, I get it. The difference would be like you know, if you got signed, it'd be worth it. But if you don't, you just lost a buttload of money. Well, you you know, how much you got paid? I think it's like 150 bucks or something. Yeah, so it's not crazy. It's yeah, not like it's WWE. Not, it's not a lot. A thousand. If you drive all the way from Mississippi to all the way to where they are, right. that's a lot of money, bro. Right. But, you know, it's one of those things, you know, where I'm sure you'll get feedback. I'm sure you'll get, hey, work on this, do that. <laughs> but if nothing else, you know, you may be able to get on the map. Didn't uh, Barry do it a few years ago? No, well, that was a gut check thing. And I don't know if that's, it's similar, but, was it? uh, but I think it's different. You know what I mean? Like, the gut check was kind of their version of tough enough, you mm -hmm. know. Um, Didn't they do a British boot camp too yeah, or something yeah. like that? So, so. That's where Rockstar Spud yeah, came I from. Mean, so, I mean, I think it's one of those there's no direct path anywhere, but, you know. Well, I'll put it this way. I know they even made James Mitchell pay yeah, to come in and do to it. To WWE. And I'm just like, I don't know. To me, it's a, kind of like a double-edged sword. I, I, I see the good of it and I see the bad of it. Right. I mean, if you're established guy like James Mitchell, definitely, yeah. you know, I don't think you should be no, doing anything. Me, that was kind of insulting. Yeah, and that's probably what it was meant to be, you know. That's possible. They uh, use him now, so who knows? And never know who was actually running the the phone line when he called. You know, well, I'd seen the interview where he talked about it. He's like, no, I paid just like everybody else. Yeah. To get my job. Well, I, I heard a story. Uh, I'm not gonna mention any any names because I'll let them tell that's that part of the story. It's their story to tell. But a guy went to uh, to do some extra work or whatever, and like the person he was he was going through was like, oh, they won't do this, they won't do that, or whatever. So he's talking to Scott Hall, and Scott Hall's like, who's telling you this? And he tells the guy's name, and Scott Hall's like, never heard of him. <laughs> you know, he's like, what does he know? Uh, and the whole point was like, you know, you never know what they want. They may want that today, but they may not tomorrow. You know, um, yeah, so it's all right story. place, right time. You know. Yeah. Uh. I say, I say, hell, why not? If you got the extra money, go for it. You know, that, and that's my thing is like, like the seminars, the tryouts, all that kind of stuff. Like, think of that as like college. You know what I mean? So you're gonna pay. You know, if you want to be a doctor, you got to pay for college. You know, you want to be a, you know, a teacher, you got to pay for college. You know, you want to be a pro wrestler, you got to pay for college. Let me ask you this: you know? Do you know like who you're trying out in front of? Any idea? I know Sanjay, Scott Demore. Okay. Um, maybe a few others. I'm, I'm sure a few others. I, I figure Scott Demore. I just didn't know who. It was. Yeah, because Sanjay's pretty much like he's kind of that third guy that you know, like Scott Demore gets a lot of push and Don Callis gets a lot of push because they're like the guys. But I think like right under them is Sanjay. Like as far as like making decisions and and things like that and writing product and so uh, it'd be cool to do that. Um. But I don't know, you know, like, it's one of those things, like, you know, would you regret it if you paid and got hired, you know? Well, you always put it as an experience. That's it, you know, and I mean. We've well, had a lot of experiences. You know, how many times have you went blowing money on crap that you didn't need and you throw it away two time. weeks later, you know, so. Or breaks. Yeah, whatever. So, I mean, I don't know, like, you know, everybody has a different path to get to, you know, WWE or get to TV or get to, you know, a, a, a to the point where you don't have to, you know, have a second job. And, you know, if you're one of those guys that get lucky and you're in the right place, right time and get seen and you're signed, great. But if you're that guy that paid, you know, $20,000, you know, if you took 500 seminars or whatever, you know, did 10 tryouts, whatever, like whatever it took you to get there. But if you got there. Well, can I tell you, you know, I'll tell you a quick little story and I know this for a fact, because he told me. But you know, uh, Chase Adams got in the match. Uh, shut he, his mouth. No, <laughs> how everybody else left the locker rooms. He's standing back here, like, Hey, uh, you, uh, you, you, you we need a guy for this guy, and you're gonna wrestle that guy, so get your gear. That's how he got his spot. Uh, yeah, go in, shut your mouth, and be where you're supposed to be. You That's know, it. he stayed in the locker room. That's awesome. <laughs> He's got a decent look to him, so there well, you go. it works. I got it. I'm just yeah. saying, but sometimes it's that you never know how you exactly. get yeah, right place, right time. You know, he, he but, told me he basically thought he was going to go in and do like a ambulance person or yeah. security. You know, and I mean, what if he wasn't there at all? Exactly. You know? Like Jr. says, you know, 
You're not gonna be put in the game if you don't have a jersey. And he told me when he's like, when he went out, he's like, hell, I got a response. I got yeah. music. Yeah. He's like, so, you know, right place, right time. That can That's mean it. more than anything. So, That's it. so, in the end, spending out 150 or 200 bucks. Or Maybe what gets you there, could be. you know? You might get to fight a... Follow ball. Follow ball. Exactly who I was thinking of. So, get steamrolled. I see them. Uh, I do it. I watched Impact this morning. And uh, well, I, mean, I watched through Impact, kind of scanned it. I watched matches. Yeah, that's how I do it. But it was, uh, <laughs> it was two job guys. No, 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 wrong match. It was uh, the Desi Hit Squad, which is now managed by Gama Singh, and that's got Don Callis written all over it. But uh, Fala Bala, like they laid them head to head, and he done the steamroller across. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I love that move. <laughs> it's, it's a great move for fat people. Yes, it so, is. Or uh, the 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 Santa Claus. Yeah. <laughs> One of the better things I've stolen from. <laughs> yeah, from fictional characters of books. Yeah. So I mean, why would not Santa, if Santa Claus is going to wrestle? Why would he not? Chris Kringle crush. Him? Yeah, the Chris Kringle crush right on. So uh, the Saint Nick pancake. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, dude, it, it, like. It's fun, you know. I think when well, I think when guys look outside the box and try to, you know, maybe do what's outside the wrestling bubble, I think good things can happen. Whether it's taking a chance on a seminar or taking a chance to be an extra, being in the right spot, or being a fat guy rolling over skinny people, you know, what I mean, uh, whatever it takes to get noticed, you know. Yeah, when I saw Fala Bala, like I, I was. I thought of Yoko. Uh -huh. I think anybody does if you grew up in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. And I was like, wow, I wonder if he can work like Yoko. And he's not a bad worker. No, he's not. I mean, there's... He does he's limited, stuff, but you know. Yeah, he's but, limited uh, what you can do with him. He can do pretty much whatever the hell he wants with you. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and so sometimes the best matches are built around wrestlers that are limited. Yeah. You know? Simplicity is easy. Yep. You don't screw up simple stuff. Right. So, uh, life in a headlock, right? Yeah, I got, you got uh, Jackson Val. Yeah. And West Warren. Right, is Jackson's out? Jackson's is out. So on Shea Crosby at head, Life in a Headlock. So just YouTube Life in a Headlock, you'll find it. Mm -hmm. While you're looking, watch Jay Andrews. Yeah, he's got. Because I, I think, think I still hold the lead. Yeah. yeah, most views. It was you and Lucas at one point. I went and checked about two weeks ago just to make sure I was still in the lead, and I was still in the lead. So I was like, well, I'll leave it alone right yeah. now. If anybody gets close to me, I had to go back on the, the sharing spree. Imagine but uh reversion in one day. Yeah. It may not be as good. <laughs> so I uh, had to do a promoter instead of a promoter wrestler. And I've been working on my questionnaire, too. i got a couple of new questions I want to ask people. Yeah. So. So, uh, any idea when Wes Warren's going to come out? Uh, Friday. Friday. I tried to release him on Friday. That way, if wrestlers are doing nothing, they have they no some time, trip. they got 15 minutes or 20 minutes, whatever. Because everybody's like, well, how long do you make them? I'm like, how long do you talk? Yeah. I don't that's like your, time That's your people. choice. Um, right. You know, if you, if you can tell a story, you get more time. I've got this many questions. Yeah. It goes until they're all answered. I mean, my questions actually lead to stories. That's yeah. the point of the question. Right. And I'll throw in my little bits and pieces here, there, and yonder. So, yeah. so uh, August eighteenth, Pro Wrestling Ego returns to the Hideaway in Jackson, Mississippi, with Squared Circle Survival. Mm -hmm. uh, we did that match last year as a Royal Rumble type match. That's what I thought. Uh, this year we're going to do it as a gauntlet: eight men, uh, one match at a time. You know, two guys start, that guy loses, another guy comes out. So, uh, looking forward to that. It's, it's a little different take. It's a different take on uh, matches in Mississippi because it's not like, something. It's not a match you see very often. I saw the Lucha Underground. Yeah, and well, I, I, was, I don't know. I'm not gonna say they didn't do it, but I stole from Chikara. They they do the big gauntlet matches and things. So uh, obviously, I'm a Chikara fan. If you hadn't figured that out by now, but uh, so I'm looking forward to it. And you know, the winner gets the uh, Squared Circle Survivor Medallion, and it gives him a uh, chance to change any stipulation of a match. He can, uh, you know, ch use that to, to make a match a title match. He can use that to end someone's career or break up a tag team, like we saw last year when the Nightmare and uh, the Path, well, the Path of Nightmares, but the Nightmare was the Survivor. Uh, they used it to change stipulation of their match with the Boot Boys to where if they won, the Boot Boys had to disband. 
So uh, it changed the whole face of Ego. Yeah, there you go. One stipulation changed the whole company. J.D. Jenkins is now a certified bad butt. Yep. You and got the Ursa Major is, is, is brainwashed, and then you got Chuck McMullen that retired. Yeah. So I mean, uh, definitely changed the landscape. So that's how important this match is. Is you know it, it's going to change everything once it's used. So uh, looking forward to that. And I'm pretty excited about it. I'm, I'm you know, I'm curious of, of who's the eight people. Uh, I can drop some hints. You suck. Uh, well, you know, I like for surprises. You know what I mean? But I know Josie Quinn. We've seen him a couple times in Ego already. No dirty looking dude. Yeah, he uh, the pale horse, yeah. Josie Quinn. Uh, he's one. J.D. Jenkins is two. Um, Joshua O'Hagan is a third. Um, I'll give you one more. Let's see, uh, Joey Abel. It's four. Okay. Um, so pretty excited. So you got a half. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, Ray Fury. He's another one. I'll give you five. Five guys. I'll leave, I'll leave three. Let me ask you this: Are the other guys sizable? One is sizable. Um, yeah, I'd say I'd say they're all bigger than Joshua Hagen. Uh, well, I don't take much yet. Or at least similar sizes. Um, I'd say one may carry a sword. Uh, one may uh, may not be seeing things straight. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So there's a few hints. So look for that August 18th at the Hideaway, Jackson, Mississippi. So that's so, the uh, uh, Squared Circle Survival Number Two. That's the main event. Yep, the main yeah. event. So any uh, other matches? That you Ursa at, Major you versus Alice Graves. We'll oh, announce okay. that. Well, no, we did that in the other one. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, on one of the many attempts. other attempts that we did. Uh, so, Alice Graves will be taking on Ursa Major. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Wes Warren didn't necessarily get the job done. Uh, Alice Graves thinks he can, so we mm -hmm. shall see. What about the Hot Tamale? Is he coming back this year? Uh, Hot Tamale will be back. So, uh, Daniel Perez will be returning. And making their Jackson debut, not their Ego debut, but their Jackson debut all the way from Arkansas, the Mercury Brothers Mercury, will be returning. Right, right. So uh, watch their life in a headlock. Yeah, Mercury rising. So uh, later, guys. See you August 18th.